morning, my peoples. Good morning, my peoples. Good morning, my peoples. Bring it on in. Bring it on in. Go mode. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Bring it on in. Bring it on in. Good morning. Good morning. What's going on, Kendall? Who else up in here? I can't see who else up in here. It's not showing me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see all my people in the building today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on, Jess? Good morning. Let me know if I'm, uh, what Jess? Because Jess be knowing. Uh, am I distorted? Am I coming through loud? Because my iPad is in the other room and I'm already running late. I don't want to be loud like I was last time. I'm sitting there yelling in the mic and distorting the, the, uh, the video up. But good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. She said I'm good. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, Kendall. All right. We got enough people in here. We'll get started. All right, y'all know how we normally do. Y'all know how we normally do. I start it off. I say, uh, I say the beginning of the phrase. You guys say the end, whatever you need. So, for example, um, if I say I am, you know, on your end, you're gonna say whatever you need for the day. You know, I am happy. I'm alive. I'm grateful. I'm whatever. He said, No, I can't. We said, No, I can't stop yelling because that's how I talk. Yes, that's, that's true. I ain't gonna lie. But uh, <laughs> let's get ready to start the day, y'all. Um, I am. I am expecting. I will be. I am grateful for. I am hoping for. I am looking forward to. I am asking God to. My next blessing is. My next miracle is. And I receive. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. We already starting off at six people. Jesus. It's something about them. It's something about them Tuesdays and Tuesday, Wednesdays and Friday. No, no, Mondays and Fridays. Y'all be coming in hot on Mondays and Fridays. Y'all be rolling. And also, oh, also, I normally I don't do it, but I should be able to be on uh, uh Saturday. What today is Friday? Yeah, I should be able to be on tomorrow, Saturday, and potentially Sunday. It depends. I should I should be able to go on Sunday though. So we should be able to have a good weekend going on. What's going on? Good morning, Miss Belinda. Good morning, Miss Gaynell. I didn't even see y'all pop in. Good morning. Good morning. But um, yeah, man. I saw you know what we're gonna talk about. Well, you know what we're gonna start talking about today. So I saw I've been seeing this thing. Y'all know Kevin Samuels, right? I've been seeing I've been seeing so many people like coin the term or start using the term. Um, yeah, Sunday morning, Kendall. I think I might be able to. I hope so. Like at eight fifteen, I might. It just depends. I know people be in and out of church. What's going on? My pops up in here. Um, my dad's gonna be on one of these episodes real soon too, y'all. I should have. Dang. See, I, I woke up all late. I probably could have get him to come up. Well, it depends on if y'all tomorrow. Oh well. But um, what I was about to say. Oh yeah, that Kevin. They've been uh coining that Kevin Sam Samuel's uh term, the high uh class man, high class um high class women and stuff like that the one percenters and this that and the third my my aunt heather um she tagged me in that shout out to heather uh oakland future uh aunt family and aunt in law that's how you say it. oh well she my aunt uh, that's one of my best friends but um she she has tagged me in this post and it was talking about like it was this one guy surrounded by like about eight people they had like this i think it's called um fit fresh fresh fit podcast or whatever it's called and it was just one guy surrounded by a whole bunch of women and like a few other dudes. And it was talking about um it was talking about society, it was talking about polygamy and monogamy. And he was talking about how society couldn't uh couldn't have grown into what it is today without polygamy back then. And at first I was like, what are you getting at? And then old girl kept in it, cause you gotta think about it, it's two different it's two different time period mentalities thinking because Old girl at the end of the table, she was thinking more so these days. You know, like polygamy is totally different these days as opposed to what it was back then. And he was referring to the fact of like back then, 
like things were ran in like kingdoms and villages and stuff like that. So it was normal for a king to have multiple wives, multiple um, baby mamas and stuff like that. That was polygamy. And these days, I'm not going to say it's as normal, but it still happens. But his point was that, you know, high class, high powered men, you know, they had to do that because that was their job. They felt as though to repopulate the area, repopulate the uh, the, the kingdoms and stuff like that. And, you know, if you could bear a seed, you sh- it shows how manly you are. And then, like, especially if you if you was to um to pass in a, a boy, you know, like a, a, the heir to the throne and this, that, and the third. Because I, I watch, well, I don't really watch TV like that. But Amber had me watching Bridgerton for a little while. And she was explaining to me, like, even though I kind of knew it via just, like, studying history and stuff like that. But it was really a thing, a cultural thing back then to where, like, men who, yeah, think about it. How is it that people thought that a man who has, who runs a kingdom, has so much wealth, has notoriety, has all this jewelry, all this whatever you want to call it. And the fact that he can't bear a son, he could have all the children in the world. He could have the least amount of children in the world. But let him not have a son, somebody to claim his throne or whatever, you know, it, it was deemed very unmanly or like you, you're not a real man or you're not a real king. And oftentimes, you know, um, especially if you have only females, now your daughter has to get married off because it was a different type of financial thing they had to do back then. And it, and it blew, I ain't gonna say it blew my mind, but it was so crazy because it's like it made sense why a lot of them began to like just be polygamous because it's like, well, if I'm knocking up at least five to six different, if I have five to six different wives and I'm knocking them up, I'm going to get a boy eventually, you know, cause, but the girl that was on the podcast that was talking about polygamy now, she was like, well, I'm not about to share a man. If I'm not happy, I'm not about to do this, that, and the third and blah, 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 blah. And old dude was like, well, back then you didn't really have a choice. You know, it was like, Back then, women didn't have as many rights. Women didn't have as much say so. And, you know, for a kingdom to thrive and certain people want to keep that wealth. So they it was OK. Yeah, I'm his first wife. But if I'm not bearing a son or if, you know, that's the way the kingdom runs, that's how they're going to do it. Because back then it was like you it's like we didn't we didn't have such a comfortable divide in classes. Back then it was like kingdom status, the royal family, poverty barely in the in-between the in-between people are like the servants of the kingdom and like a few people that help run the outside like the the shop managers and like people doing like food and stuff like that but now nowadays you got you know you got your your really really rich people you got middle class people like us and then you got you know the the people that's in poverty that's that's slightly above us i mean slightly slightly below us financially that is because you don't want to deem people and their worth based off of their money that's wrong to do and um it was just so interesting. I said, let's say it was so interesting to see like just how far we've moved forward in time and people's ideologies on monogamy and polygamy. And it makes me, it makes me really think because it's like me personally, I'm a monogamous type of person It's like, I even, even before I started, um, like dating to really marry, I can't, I don't have the energy to deal with more than one woman at a time. Like the mental stamina, that's too much. I'm too analytical. I'm too involved. Like I already got a lot going on with like between trying to run businesses, doing this, that, and the third. But I don't see how people could really successfully run around. And I, and people do it. I mean, people do it well on both ends, men and uh, man and female. But I don't know how y'all do. But I think I think, and I would like for y'all to kind of interject uh, in the comment section on how y'all feel about it. Do you guys think that's one of the things to where it's like? It, people the reason why people these days can really get away with it and like really find either find no problem or just can do it so freely is because they don't care as much do you feel as though people who people who are in polygamous relationships are just cheating people you know like they they can only give or how can i put it they don't want to give a hundred percent of love to one person so they spread it around or they're the type of people to where well, it's boring to be with one t- one type of person because I I can I ain't gonna say I can understand, but I've seen enough. I've seen a lot of interviews with, especially like, and it's crazy because I, I watched a lot of like holistic interviews, like with people, you know, they go back to like African uh tribal cultures and stuff like that, and they say how it's it's real. Actually, monogamy is um is, is demonized because it's like well, you know, it messes with repopulation, and also you know they say they talk about like how women 
can only have can only bear one child, one to two children, but depending on how the, the sperm grows, you know, you can get a single child, twins, you know, triplets, whatever. But like a woman can get pregnant and has to, you know, be basically creating a child for nine months and then pass it while men are able to I think like one one not sperm but like one full ejaculated action has enough sperm to po- repopulate the entire planet. I think it's like around a billion it's like it's billions of sperms in there. So they were saying how a man should be fruitful and like, you know, like really impregnate this, that and the third, go forth and spread your seed and stuff like that. And it really makes me think that's like that's how pe- some people still think to this day. And like there's a lot of cultures that you know, in a lot of civilizations that were built off of that. So just think about the crossing of genetics or the crossing of who's really who and where we really come from, because it's so interesting to see people. Cause that, that's the thing is like, it's demonized in some areas and it's really received in some areas and in other places, people don't care. Like, I feel like out here, the only reason why polygamy or quote unquote cheating is so demonized out here is because, you know, people, people still tie relationship and sexual relationships with emotion and um, spiritual connection. And it, when it comes down to just them loving and liking exclusivity, when you have other areas of other people, they're like, it is what it is. What's going on? Cause I just see you up and what's going on. Cause um, a lot of people out here, you know, it, it's, it's half and half. And that makes me think like, well, me personally, I'm still going to believe what I believe. In. You know, I'm a monogamous type of person. But it makes me think because, you know, I like to think about the other side. I like to think about other people's perspectives and how they live in their life, you know. And then I did a lot of re- not say a lot, a lot of research, but I did enough research finding interviews and like, you know, there's, there's a lot of there's, pe- there's actually people on YouTube that's like famous for being polygamous couples, you know. And then like you have them, they a lot of questions they would ask, they would ask the polygamous couple would be like, you know, um, what is you guys sex life like? You know, is it like what is what is it like? being one man with like two wives and vice versa does that and the third does the other person i get jealous how does that work especially when you try to live in the same roof and you're having this that all this other t- stuff going on and it really like it really made me think about how quote-unquote difficult that is because you have people because they apparently there was like it's interpersonal because you got some people that's in polygamous ra- relationships to where it's like they can only be intimate as a group they got some people where it's like, well, you have to get permission to do that solo or like this, that, and the third, you know, and it's, and it's like, well, what to me, I'll be like, well, what's the point of being in a polygamous ra- relationship if like, if we so say love each other equally and we spreading the relationship equally and, you know, the whole point is for us to like, you know, be mixing it up and this, that, and the third, why, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, why doesn't, why do I need your permission to do something without you with the person that we're together with, you know? And on top of that, well, before I dive to the, I just see Kendall say something. Hold on, let me read it. He said, "Y'all, give me a second. This thing is really far away." Kendall said, "I think love is replaced with attention and value." Okay, multiple partners is a sense of newness. Correct. This way, you'll never have to worry about something getting old or boring. Relationships become worn after a while due to the lack of attention. If this thing, was, the lack of attention and value to your partner in the first place. So. To escape that responsibility, something new has to be placed. And you, and you know what? Be, to has to uh, replace. I definitely agree with that because, and that's kind of what I was about to go into. Because it's, it's like, I feel as though even, because even, they like to say like the newness and this, that, and the third. It's like, that makes sense to a certain extent because even with those, let's say three people, right? It's like that can get boring. What people fail to realize is that when you're in a relationship, it's work. Now, the type of work that you have to put in, how easy the work goes, this, that, and the third, that's up to how y'all function as a group or how y'all function as two people. You know, but it's like, I don't see, I don't see how, like, how people can say, how, how they can say, oh, well, it gives it like, it's fresh, it's new, blah, blah, it's exciting. But knowing that, you know, you have to, if you guys stay true and married to each other or whatever for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like, to me, I agree with Kendall. It's like, it's a responsibility. And, and that's the thing. That's because people have, people have, how can I put it? People have put a boring connotation to the word responsibility or work in, in terms of relationships, not realizing that the more constructive work and responsibility you put into relationships, the better the relationship gets. 
rather than always seeking for external things or new things or other things to make your marriage better. I'm not, and, and when I say that, I'm not talking about like, you know, oh, well, we got to go on dates to blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about like other people, you know, and other things or other uh, ideologies that can so say come in and grow you guys relationship or something like that. I'm not talking like that. I, I feel as though whenever you guys start, they see responsibility as a type of labor. Exactly. And I couple that with if once people stop demonizing exclusivity and marriage and monogamy and stuff like that, and honestly, just look, let people live their life how they want to live their life, and but really study the successful parts of the people that's deciding to do something opposing to you, then you know it should be it should be what, what's going on, Miss Melissa. It should be it's going to be whatever it's going to be. But at the same time, I don't feel like people should put such boring connotations or lame connotations on people that decide to be monogamous because it's one of those things to where it's like okay i look at a lot of successful relationships moving forward as people that are single right and we're not single that's in uh, monogamous relationships and you know it's it's very like you gotta think about the process of of growing with another like okay just being in a relationship in general like i said before you're evolving with another person you know and I don't care what nobody say. When you're when you're in, let's just keep it. Let's oh, just because so I don't go back and forth from these perspectives, and y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're in a monogamous relationship, and you guys are, you know, you're both consciously trying to be exclusive to one another, working on the relationship, showing each other y'all good and bad sides, and growing as people. That's work, but there's beauty in that. A lot of people are concerned about how they come off to others how they look to others their image their status is that in the third not realizing that in real life in real successful relationships that doesn't matter because when you're working you know first of all you're not even gonna be the same people in the next five years the next three years you know it's like they say the human mind evolves and the personality of a person is supposed to grow and evolve every five to seven years but like i've been in a relationship for three years you know and it's like we're not even close to the same people we was when we first started you know, like the mindsets have changed, the ideologies have changed, the relationship has drastically changed, you know, and all that work, like, you, like, basically, you're reaping what you sow. So all that work that you have put in up until this point, you know, it determines where you guys go moving forward. So it's one of them situations. So I'm about to look at this iPad because y'all got them comments rolling in and this phone is small, 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 and I can't see that. It's one of them uh, situations to where it's like, how can I put it? You're in, you're in, you're in a world of stability that's constant that's it's it's stable right it's a stable mo momentum moving forward with some with one person but it's it's malleable meaning it's constant it's constantly in a state of change or progression so whenever you're focusing on that that's a part of the responsibility to work in a journey that kendall and i was talking about earlier but also that's the beauty of it because like i said before nobody wants to wants to be deemed ugly or irrational or hard to work with hard to please is that in the third in a relationship not realizing that you're not it's not even really that you just gotta grow out of some things grow into some things or y'all just gotta deal with some stuff because it's like it's like doing anything or try to get better at anything in life you have to practice you have to put time into master what you're doing or what you're experiencing so it's like if i'm doing all of that and if i'm moving forward with that person like that i don't expect it to be perfect one, because I'm not perfect. I feel like that that's a social media thing, too. It's like people, social media is all about an image. You know, well, pre presenting yourself to be flawless, perfect. You know, having this type of glamorous life, this art, this artsy-fartsy life and stuff like that. But in real life, you're not, nobody, that's that's one thing I always tell people. I say, you ever notice how people always post when they up but never post when they down? People always post whenever they shining and, and bossing up but never post when they under construction. You know, not realizing that, see, because that social media is like a, what's going on, Torrin? Uh, social media is like a um, it's like a one sided coin. You only get to see the beauty, the beauty of what's going on in people's lives. So and it's, a, it's also a form of entertainment. People don't realize that we're entertaining each other. It's like little mini series and TV shows going on all on social media. So whenever you do see something bad, you do see something that opposes what you what's what gets the most. Like, yeah, I think about it, too. What's gearing this towards this, this ideology? Well, people like it. People sharing it, people saving it, people commenting. You get attention, you get praise, you get some type of incentive for looking perfect, for looking like shiny, you know, for looking right and progressively forward. But people don't like to talk about or show the quote unquote ugly side. But to me, 
you can't be beautiful without being ugly. You know, because it's like, how do you know what beautiful is if you haven't seen, like, how do you, the contrast? You know what I'm saying? It's like, if I'm going to sit there and promote this, I'm not going to say I'm going to be out here like, oh, well, you know, like, well, we're going through this, blah, 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 blah. But what I am saying is let's start being real about relationships. Let's start being real about all the stuff we have going on and stop making everything so shiny and like, oh, this is new and blah, blah, blah. Because that's why people do what they do nine times out of ten. No, well, she can't keep my interest. He can't keep my interest. Uh, he can't do this sexually. She can't do this sexually. Not realizing that, you know, there's so many things that can not only help and in, in build the relationship, but that's your moment to not only get closer, but to grow and fix things and learn how to do it together. And that's your chance to learn. Because let's say, okay, let's talk about, um, and we talked about a few days ago, but let's bring it back just so I can make sure I, I'm really clear about this because I, I really want to change this ideology of um, sexual relationships between partners. When you, think, when you think about, let's say, one erectile dysfunction or two libido decrease in women. So for men on the erectile dysfunction side, you know, you now you're in a situation to where like the sex isn't the same, your body isn't the same, and people a lot of people like to blame it on, oh, I'm getting older, or oh, I'm not as young as I used to be. That's not true. The, and I'm, I don't mean no offense about what, I, what I'm about to say. You're just ignorant. You're just ignorant to things out there that are actually placed on this earth to keep you as vital as possible. Herbs. There's a whole bunch of herbs out here. There's people. There are men who are well in their 70s, knocking these young women down. And I'm just going to be real about it. They know the herbs to take. They know the foods to eat. They keep themselves healthy, and they knocking these young women down. Plus, they got money, this, that, and the third. And like, I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying you're going to be as athletic as you are in your 20s as you is in your 70s. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, like, all of these sexual problems that a lot of a lot of men are facing and, and, are, and having in, like, their marital issues and stuff like that, it's it can be fixed. You don't have to live like this. And on the flip side, you got women that go through they're young that go through a lot of libido uh, decreases. You know, things aren't as things aren't the same down there, you know, without getting too far into details. But it's like, you know, there's herbs for that. You have a lot of you have a lot of women who are, who are out there who take a lot of herbs to get themselves better. And a lot of men who take herbs to get themselves better, you know, and it's like. Once they get that going and then like say they're in a relationship and instead of them demeaning each other, well, you don't do this the same Well, you don't do that the same Well, this ain't as good. I'm going to find me a young nigga and this is blah, blah, blah. But instead of doing that, it's like, okay, let me do my research. Let me get with these people and these things that's going to cook. And that's another thing too. Drop the pride on a man. What's up? What's going on, Drill? Drop the pride on a, on, a, on a male and female standpoint. If you got something wrong with your body and if you can't do what you supposed to do for yourself and for somebody else, go get help. Go find go find what you got to find to get to where you need to be because you don't have to suffer. Why would you want to live a life like that? You know what I'm saying? Go find you some help. Go go do your research. People didn't just man. Look, if you go back to the Bible days, people were still getting down. Now, granted, that's that's a whole different type of there was on there was on the real fruit of life back then. You know, times didn't change. Herbs didn't change and fruits didn't change. But them people was oh, oh and still getting busy and popping out kids. You know, so it's like don't don't sit there and. Let's social because social media right now is like, oh, well, we need a high class man, eight, six figures. And you need to have this size, that and that, this, that and the third and blah, 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 blah. And it's like people, especially these young people, I hate it. These young people are starting to like really I'm talking like I'm not young, but these young people, these younger people are starting to get fixated on 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 like this ideology of what perfection or what a perfect man or the man that they need and the woman that they need is not realizing that it's not realistic is not realistic at all and that's what the thing see that's why i could be going let me tell y'all something that's the only reason why i'm on social media right now is to for run my businesses and do stuff like this with the live stream and talk to people i do not like social media because social media is one of the things to where it's like well i don't like i don't like the i don't like the the pop culture of social media i do love the information side i do love the fact that i can go and get information like that i can research stuff learn stuff get books i love that side of it but i hate the perpetuation of like what most things that are popular or trending or like, you know, the things that are really influential going forward in life. I hate it on social media because it's like, it's so fake. It's so fake, bro. You know, so I don't, I really don't see how people going back to what I was saying before. I really don't see how people, you know, need something. Oh, we need something new. This, that, and the third. No, you just need to work on yourself. And that's another thing. How, 
how are you so that's how you know somebody is not really working on themselves because nobody's perfect you're going to always have something to work on that's how i know people are not really focused truly focused are in love in their relationships are focusing on themselves and trying to work on themselves and their marriage and constantly grow and practice because when you are really involved think think about it think about it from a real man's perspective if i'm working a lot if i'm a real man i'm providing if i'm working hard i'm trying to get better i got maybe got one or two side hustles going on I'm trying to provide and do this, that, and the third. I'm married and I'm and I'm doing all of this. I'm trying to stay healthy, all of that. I don't have time for no other female. I don't have time for all this other stuff. You know, if if we really working on our marriage and our life and our health and our potential family, this, that, and the third, where in the world does you do you have time to be messing with four, five different other women, four, five different other men? What are you doing with your life? You know. It's like, now look, if you want to be single and, and be player mode, that's on you. I can't tell you how to live your life. But for all the people that sitting there complaining about, oh, well, relationships are boring and marriage is boring and blah, blah, blah. You obviously not putting in enough time and work because when you when you put when you really focus on your own, it's like how they say that it's like you'll never get your grass as green as you want it because you're worried about other people's yards. Water your own grass. As cliche as that may sound, water your own grass, you know, tend to yourself. Now, granted, you got some people that actually do that and some other people just fall. They fall astray. You know, some somebody in the marriage or somebody in a relationship, you know, they just can't keep up. But you got to realize that, you know, you you're going to work through what you can work through. You're going to get through what you can work through. And sometimes it's just a life lesson you got to go through. Sometimes people are in relationships for long term to learn to learn things. But um, that's not your person, because we've also learned how to what's the word? I want to use the right word how to tolerate certain things we're not supposed to accept in relationships, you know? So you got a lot of people that's tolerating, especially stuff that they know. Cause, and, and and I dive in that to say this, don't go into a relationship or don't, or don't go into a marriage, not being prepared to work on the things. Well, trying to be prepared to work on the things, you know, you can't tolerate because when you start denying yourself, your realness of what you know you really want and what you really know you can't because some people some people know for a fact i can't tolerate cheating i can't tolerate somebody not you know because because love languages are real you know it's like i, I got y'all can't see it but i got like a plethora of books about just life and business and relationships and love and holistic health and all of that like my book tower is crazy on this side and that's just the one that's up in here i got one all, i got one in my room one on the other side of this like i got books everywhere because i love reading that type of stuff and the more I read about societies, the more I read about marriage, the more I read about life, the more I read about relationships, it all boils down to we are a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of different types of things, but we are so similar. So there's somebody, I, I don't care what nobody say, there's somebody for everybody. I don't, oh, well, I don't believe in soulmates and I don't believe in this, that, and the third and blah, 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 blah. Cool for you. And, be, and you got to think about it, being that you're accepting that ideology and you keep saying that out loud, you're creating that. Because we, we talked about like a, a week or two ago, <clears throat> excuse me, we talked about the power of um, our, our no, the physicality of our, of our words, how they're not just audible, they're really physical. And how they come into the atmosphere and they come into your life and you keep saying things and you woe is me and this, that, and the third. You're going to live that life because you perpetuate that so much with your vocals and with your mind and with your spirit and with your faith and with your energy. But if you was to flip that and start gaining knowledge and start taking the time to put the knowledge in yourself to be like, oh, well, you know, well, this is not good for me right now. But the more I work on myself, the better I am prepared for whoever's supposed to be in my life because I want this type of person. And that's another thing, too. Not a lot of people know the type of partner that they want. Or better yet, they don't know the type of partner that they need. So you operate now for want, 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 and you keep getting what you want in a partner. But it's never quite working. It's never quite what, what it needs. It's always something is that in the third. But when you start really practicing and focusing on, okay, this is what I need in a partner, and you sprinkle some of your wants in there, the the needs, expect, that's one thing. When needs are met, everything else looks amazing. That's what people fail to realize. They glorify and glamorize the wants and demonize and like make the need so basic and boring not realizing once all them needs are met or at least 80 to 90 percent of your needs are met in a relationship and now you sprinkling this or wants to with that man you got a full course meal because like nobody and that's nothing people got to stop expecting other people to a hunt to to how can i put it to a hundred percent make them satisfied with life love and the relationship 
No one person is designed to be 100% of your life. That is impossible. No one person is 100% responsible of you. You should not be, man, look, you should be able to work on yourself from the inside. You should be able to perpetuate happiness, all this other stuff from the inside. And your partner is supposed to complement that. It's supposed to coincide with that. Think about it. Partner. Not, not somebody who abides in you spiritually and physically, but a partner. Someone who is a part of you. Somebody who is going through life as your co-partner. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to realize that that person had a life before you. You had a life before that person. That person had dreams and ideologies before you. And likewise on your end. So when y'all come together and when y'all trying to come together, y'all going to clash. Or y'all going to have things that's different. Let me not say clash. Y'all going to have differences. So with that being said, the beauty of the, like me and Kendall said earlier, the work and the responsibility of moving forward in a relationship to become a high class relationship, man or woman, is the construction of how do we continue to meld and bind together regardless of our differences. But you know what that takes that a lot of people don't want to do? Now you got to see that person's perspective, understand their differences and talk about it. People do not talk no more these days. People do not talk. People will sit there and look at you and be, and you could sit there, bam, 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 and they're just they're not going to catch it. And they, they don't know how to talk. You know, and it, granted, a lot of it comes from, like, broken homes, uh, broken relationships with their parents. Because you learn a lot of your basics through, your, you know, your, your infant uh, and childlike stages with your parents and stuff like that. But at the same time, you are still responsible for growing whenever you get older. You got people that's like, man, if I would have started weightlifting when I was in my teens and blah, 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 I'll be. But you didn't. So do what you can with what you have now. Shut up and move forward. Period. You got people that, oh, I wish I would have started my business, blah, blah, blah. But you didn't. You know, shut up. Like, just like start doing the work and start putting in the time. Now, do what you can with what you have and move forward. And God's going to take care of the rest. But that's another thing. We're such a godless society these days. The universe and blah, 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 blah. And like I see stuff that I that I repost on Instagram and it got what the universe will blah, blah, this, that, and the third. I be putting that little asterisk. I scratch out universe, God, because I believe that God made the universe. How are we going to sit there and praise the, the, the product of what God made, but not the person that made it? What's going on, Corlin? But not the person that made it. You feel me? So it's like it's like you have to take the time. Like I said before, constantly work on yourself. And when you so say call yourself getting in a relationship with somebody, be clear. That's another thing too. Have have some standards and have and have have some points to where you know for for a fact that this is what at least in coming to the relationship with hey, this is what I'm expecting from you. Hey, cause like you know, you know what's the problem with a lot of people? This is this is the and I now need y'all to really listen to this. A lot of people fall in love with the idea or the fantasy of what they think that person is. And then when you actually start mingling and coinciding and living and trying to be with that person, be in a relationship with that person, and they don't live up to what you already had in your head, all of a sudden they're the worst thing. I'm not attracted anymore, blah, 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 blah. That's your fault. But that's that's a problem that we have these days. We like to We like to create these personas and these ideologies of who people are, and we've never even spoken to them. Or we never had a real... <laughs> excuse me we never had a real conversation or took the time to really get to know these people you know but you didn't have a few sexual encounters with them you talk from now and then you know y'all got the good faces on so like so far it's what you want and what you think but when those those times when you're imagining and just dwelling and thinking not realizing you're coloring in all the lines that they never covered in colored in for you because you're not supposed to color man let that person show you who they are and then you run with that that's why i say know what you need so whenever you get into a relationship or you get into, alt not altercation, an interaction with somebody that's going to lead to whatever, you know, at least know what you need and know and know what they bring to the table and not what you think they do. And you're not all, you know, just hypnotized by the infatuation, the fantasy, the, the ideas that you put in your own head of that person. Realize who they are. Because people that's one thing about people, bro. It, 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 I, no telling how long it takes, you know, but they can't hide their true selves forever. You know, you're not, I'll put it to you this way. I personally believe that you're not going to really know if that person's for you until y'all both didn't see each other's good and bad sides. When y'all both didn't see each other's highs and lows, because it's easy to love somebody when they're happy. It's easy to be with somebody whenever they're happy, go lucky, when things are going good and money's going good. And, you know, all of life is just sunshine and bubbles and champagne and all this type of stuff. But let somebody die that they love. 
and they start going through emotional trauma. Let let feelings that they caught that they have for the ex start popping back up that they never dealt with. Let certain uh, addictions that they have start popping up. Let certain things that you know their ugly side start popping up. And are you gonna go with them through that? Are you gonna? Cause like you gotta think about it, not everybody's perfect. In my in my relationship personally, you know there was some broken pieces on both ends that we both had to see and go through. You know certain things that like you know we had to really try to figure out in order to move forward. And you got to fix those broken pieces if you really want to be with that person. You know, and I'm not saying it's our job to fix everybody and, you know, not everybody's a project. But you know what I'm talking for the people that's in real relationships. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's like it's a difference between fixing a broken person from scratch. And they really just like you're trying to re- literally create a person that you want as opposed to, OK, we didn't have a bump in the road. Let's fix that. You know what I'm saying? That's the beauty of the work and the responsibility. And on top of that, you get to know that person on a whole nother level. Y'all get to have that vulnerability on a whole nother level. That's what that's real intimacy. That's real seclusion. That's real privacy. That's a real relationship. Now, see, my thing is, if I didn't seen you at your it's, it's a different type of I don't want to get too 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 graphic or on here, but I'm going to just say it. It's a different type of love and intimacy that you can have and make with a person. When y'all have both shared the most vulnerable and hurt sides with each other, y'all chose to love each other through it and y'all going through life together, not not faking it. I'm talking about genuine on both sides, because some people be like, oh, we did that. He still cheated. He didn't genuinely open all the way up to you. She didn't genuinely open all the way up to you. I'm talking about when y'all really dig in and start facing them demons. It gets so much better, you know, because it's like you're officially going into another realm with that person. And that's another thing too. We've strayed so far away from our, our practices in life. You know, we like to say, Oh, praise the ancestors and thank the ancestors for blah, 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 blah. But y'all not, y'all not sitting there and doing the things that the ancestors did to move forward in life. You know, it's like the things that the answer that our great, great grandparents and all them other people, you know, that tried to do well, did they best within relationships and stuff like that. And you got to also realize they were tapped in spiritually. Because what people fail to realize is because we move in such a different way these days and we like to glamorize this, that, and the third, and we don't base off of we don't base our chase and our wants off of what we should, we don't take the time to pray about that person that's coming into our life. Uh we don't take the time to really speak to God and see, like, okay, what am I not seeing? Do I need to be mindful? Do I need to be prepared? Uh we don't do that no more. And, and I'm not I'm not perfect. I didn't do it initially, you know, but like at a certain point in time. It got, it's like you just got to be, it's like, why do you want to keep going through the same cycles over and over and over, keep getting the same heartbreak? And I'm speaking from experience, the same heartbreak, the same situations, going through life, trying to be a better person. And you keep running across these little raggly people, you know what I'm saying? But like, once you take the time to step back and you be like, all right, cool, let me peep you out. I'm still getting to know you, but I, let's, let's be patient with it. You know, there's patience is gone these days. Nobody likes to take their time and be vulnerable and really dig and be transparent. Good morning, Kimmy. Uh, excuse me. And be transparent with the other person. So whenever that person is withholding, you ask God, okay, they're withholding certain things and I'm not trying to invade their privacy, but show me what I need to see or if there's any flags I'm not seeing. And give it time to manifest. You know, people pray for stuff and they expect it to happen the same day. You know, and, and if you got it like that, that's amazing. God bless you. But like, you pray, you gotta realize what you're praying for. You're praying for a cause and an effect that typically takes a little bit of time. You know, if it's that urgent, God typically shows it to you like that. But like, let's be real about it. You know, it's like you're courting. A lot of people fail to realize like courting is a thing and it's still a thing. No matter what y'all people like to, oh, we talking and blah, blah, blah. People are courting. And just because you've gotten involved with somebody's that and the third doesn't mean you're married to them. Now, when you decide to be exclusive. And start to form that road to marriage. You know, like that's when cause that's another thing. Young women, until that man say we exclusive and you my girlfriend is that in the third, don't assume anything else. Cause you got people out there these days that are that are that are sit there and have the most sex with you, take you out on dates and talk you up and this, that, and the third, even show you to their parents. Oh, that was never my girlfriend. We never dated this, that, and the third. So until we get some clarity. You know, you're not that. And don't. And that's another thing, too. Women, y'all got to realize that. And I'm going to just be real about it. Y'all got y'all hold the power in these relationships. Y'all really do. Y'all hold the power to the, the next standard of man, because a lot of things that men do or men glorify or men try to work hard for is to appease to women. 
if we're going to be real about it. Why is it that men feel important to be in shape and to be sexually in their prime as long as possible or to be sexually healthy or to have a whole bunch of money and have the nice cars and to be able to provide this, that, and the third? Because that's what women want. If women, if women as a whole, as a hundred percent women whole was to be like, y'all not getting no box, y'all not getting no relationship, y'all not getting no nothing until y'all start tapping back into y'all spirituality and y'all start taking care of all of these civil problems that's going on right now as real men. A whole it'll be Black Panthers 3.0 will pop up in this mug. And a whole all of society will change. You know, but like I say, all I like to say, women realize the power that you have. Like if you are withholding yourself from a man that so say wants to talk to you and be with you this, that, and the third, and you're trying to take it slow and you're trying to be real about this, that, and the third, okay, see how he acts whenever you make that known. See how, see if anything changes. See if he start texting you less. See if he start calling you less. Because let me tell you something. He, they could put on, bro, look, people could put on, and this is on both men and women, people could put on some faces. They really can. So the moment you start saying what your standards are, what the, the mission is, and you start noticing things change, take the red flag for the red, for the red flag. Don't sit there and be, what's going on Fantasia? Don't sit there and be the type of person to where it's like you see change or you see things that stirred up your stomach or stirred up your spirit and it's like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that and you ignore it. Why? Why do that? Because when you start ignoring stuff like that, <clears throat> excuse me, when you start ignoring stuff like that, remember like what we said about decisions and choices, that's a choice you made. So now your life or the next few steps of your life or what's about to happen between you and that person is based off of that thing that you ignored, that you saw, that you didn't, what's going on, Andre, that you didn't take the time to, one, acknowledge, two, talk about, or three, inquire about. So with, with all of that being what you decided to do, right, don't be shocked whenever you didn't do your part and you don't get what you want at the end or you don't get the person that you thought you were supposed to be with, you know, or, or a form of them. Because you didn't do your work. And it's, it may, and look, let me tell you something. It, it sound, I know y'all, it may sound meticulous. It may sound like a lot of all of that just to be with somebody. I can't just flow in, blah, blah, blah. What's going on, Shakira? I can't just flow in, you know, find love and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that because the thing, these things that I'm saying to do is a form of lifestyle, is a form of functionality that brings you into another plethora, another, like you got to think about it. When you act a certain type of way, you're only allotted and have access to a certain type of person because me personally, I feel as though only certain people get a hold of the one percenters or the faithful guys and faithful women and blah, 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 blah. No, you, there's certain things you gotta, there's certain, there's a certain piece of you or there's a certain way you have to be in order to de quote unquote deserve that or have that because I'm not saying you, you're not going to run across them. You're not going to interact with them, but there's going to be something missing within you. If you don't work on yourself, there's going to be something missing within you that keeps that person around. You feel me? So it's like, cause I'm not saying, cause man, look, I'm not saying you can't bag what you want to bag, but at the same time, it's a difference between, cause everybody think, Oh, I bagged him. I got him. I'm having relations with him. I'm doing that in the third day. They take a spending money and taking me on trips. I got them. That don't mean you got them. Keeping the thing that you, the blessing that you wanted or the person that you wanted, keeping that requires you to be a certain type of person have a certain set amount of skills to have to have certain things understood about and with life already because what's going on tiffany because if you don't you can very much so grab that person and get the person the very thing that you want but how long will that last how long will you actually keep that if you're not doing your due diligence it's going to be heartbreak over and over again. It's going to be dissatisfaction over and over again. It's going to be all oh, niggas ain't this and women ain't this and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, because you're you so focused on the glitz and the glamour and you're not taking the time to establish who you are as a person, what you want, what you need and how you operate as a person. That's another thing you got to realize. It's like you I want to say this the right way without without offending somebody. I don't want to offend nobody. I, I'll say it like I'll say it like this. You have to make sure, well, but yet, yeah, stop, stop expecting perfection. Just stop. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. And it's one of them situations to where you have to really decide who and how you want to go through life with, you know, and 
I'm not because I hate that, especially on social media. Oh, good, good men are so rare. Good women are so rare. No, we move different. We don't want to be seen by half of y'all because we, as a good man, it's like I don't want. It's like I just don't want to be seen by somebody that I know is gonna waste my time. I don't want you wasting my. Why? Like I don't have time to waste. I'm not y'all. Look, I'm not old, but I'm not too young. I'm 26. You know, and I'm, I'm very young. Don't get me don't get me wrong. I'm very young, but I've learned the. I've finally under coming to fruition of the understanding of time. My time is so valuable. My body, my spirit, and my mind is so valuable. To where it's like, I look. If you get in the way, I'm gonna pray about it. But if I really feel led to cut you off, bye, bye, Jose. You gotta go. You got to go because it's like I'm not about to sit here and waste my time. So don't feel bad if you're not ready for the person that you want because you're just chasing the glitz and glam and all this other type of stuff. And then when you finally get it, you spent so much time chasing and trying to, you know, look a certain way or a piece a certain type of way, not really working on your insides. So it's like, oh, man, six months of the relationship going good. And then, OK, now you got to get into the work part. It's like, huh? And hopefully you got somebody who can like, you know, build you up. Like I said, when you hit the roadblocks, let's build you up. But if you're not built for that, that process, it can come off. Now, keep in mind, it's all point of view, too. On top of the life experience that you go through, it can come off as, oh, he's trying to control me. She's trying to control me. Oh, he's trying to tell me what to say and how to move in public and this, that, and the third. No, this is what you want, right? So let somebody who's there try to help you get there. And I'm not saying let people control you, but be open-minded and be real about what's going on. That Just because people, especially somebody you're choosing to be with, feels as though they can help you, they probably will try. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're trying to control you. It doesn't necessarily mean they're trying to manipulate you or hurt you or to put you in a position to be set up for whatever. That doesn't mean that you got to have discernment to know, OK, like I'm not where I need to be. I'm going to take it because everything is a chance too. I'm going to take this chance for this person to help me grow. And I'm going to, you know, build with this person is that in the third. But at the same time, you know, I have to do more internal work than letting that, per that person externally come in and try to build me from the inside. You know, you have to be in tune with yourself. Because if you're not in tune with yourself, any and everybody could just come inside and be like, I'm going to move this around. I'm going to move this for me. All right, she's how I want her to be. He's how I want him to be. Let's go through life. And now you're very unhappy and you're very unsatisfied because you've developed and accepted this form of you that's not really who you are. But you but you let other people, other things, outside things, the glitz and the glams and the wants, 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 determine how you move about life rather than focusing on what we talked about earlier, your needs. What do you need in a relationship? What do you need from a partner? What do you need from yourself? Because that's another thing, too. You got to realize what you need from yourself and what you got to give to yourself to get what you want and need from somebody else. Because if you're not at least giving yourself what you need, when you're going to try to ask or try to get that from somebody else, it's going to be hell and high water. Because it's like, I can't even give that to me. So how can I expect you to give that to me? But you got people walking around like that. I don't know how to save money. I don't know how to uh, satisfy my partner sexually. I don't know how to have emotional talks. I don't know how to get through trauma. I don't know how to have quality time. I don't know how to do acts of service. I don't know how to respect physical touch, but I want you to do that for me. And a nigga like me is like, what? what? Uh-uh. Go about, go about your life. Go about your life. Because I'm not, man, look, I'm here for growth and construction and fixing a relationship, this, that, and the third. But I'm not, I'm, this ain't no build to bear. I'm not about to sit there and have to do all of this from, from start, from the scratch, from the start. You you coming to me? It's like it's like a puzzle. It's like don't don't just come to me with your box of puzzles and just dump it on the table and be like, hey hey, put this puzzle together for me. Nigga, at least come with half the puzzle or like seventy five percent. At least have some pieces together. Now I got okay. What this piece is? Okay, this piece go right here. All right, I'm gonna flip this upside down. Where this piece go? How does how this piece go over here? You know, like no no like I wanna I want to. Y'all should come to in relationships with y'all pieces at least somewhat together because y'all missing out. And I'm not fussing, though, but I'm just saying this like I'm trying to get the point I'm trying to get to y'all is y'all missing out on so much beauty of a process. There's so much beauty in the process of building. You're going to go. And that's the thing. I'm going to sound crazy when I say this, but the hell that you're going to go through is going to make the heaven that you walk in so much more shinier, so much better. You're going to appreciate things so much more because it's like and I'm not saying you got to go through crap just to you know get good things or appreciate good things 
But let's be real about relationships. Y'all going to have y'all days where y'all irritated. Y'all going to have days where y'all don't want to deal with each other. Y'all going to have days where y'all really just don't want to be in each other's face. Y'all going to have days to where it's like, you know, money might be short, this, that, and the third. But if I can get through it with you, if we have a system, if we're in a place to where we could really get this going and move it forward, I mean, I'd rather go through that than having to like really try to pull somebody from, what's going on, Melissa? Try to pull somebody from their bootstraps and Birth out a birth out a person and raise. I don't want to raise nobody. I want to grow with somebody. I ain't got time raising you. We adults. We are adults. You you got to have at least something together, you know. But oh, I'm running out of time. We got five more minutes, y'all. But um, cause I ain't never even took my dogs out yet. Pull things, but they good. They still knocked out. We we was out all late last night with a bonfire. They was out. They was up to about one two o'clock in the morning. They just like children. But um. I say I say all that to say, what do you say? A partner, not a parent. Exactly. I need to go back and read some of these comments, but I, I ain't got enough time to talk about them. Um, but how, how about to say that? How's going to end this? Yeah. So I, I'm saying all that to say, you know, really take the time. Because at the end of the day, it really it really boils down to you knowing who you are, knowing what you need. Because you got don't stop. Stop being on social media and being like. I need a man that's like this, blah, 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 blah. You know, like and reshare if you you agree and blah, 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 blah. No, because in my in my personal opinion, I can't speak for everybody for what I'm about to say. I don't want, if I'm a woman, I don't want a nigga like yours. I don't want a nigga that do everything right for you because everything that's right for you is not right for me. You got somebody, what, what if your type, or what if that person's type is somebody who's always on the go busy and, and 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 just you know like i don't need that much time with them and this that and the third and like they you know they all about them and blah 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 blah. that's their type of person but for you you a quality time act of service type of person so no i want somebody who i can grow with i want somebody who i can really like be with who i can really sit there and like you know go through life with on a physical personal intimate level because that's how i am it's like i don't mean as much time as i can be with you i can be away from you I'm I'm a very independent type of person, but when my intimate side or when my my loving caring side kicks in, like I can be Hey, what you doing today? Nothing. Okay, let's let's watch TV all day. Like I, I can be that type of person, but I can also be like, um, I got a lot going on today. I love you. You know, you might not hear too much from me today, but you know, we're gonna come together some at some point today, but just know I'm not gonna really be on my phone. You know, and some and, and I got stuff to do. And some people can't take that. So you got to realize what you need and who you are and find, like she said, balance, find somebody that, that balances you out because you got to think about it. You don't have to be with said person. That's what we, we get that stuff. So stuck in, I'm supposed to end this. Y'all I got two more minutes. We're not supposed to be, I got to end this y'all. Don't settle. <laughs> I'll just say that. Don't, don't settle. Just don't settle. I'm not. And at the same time, I'm not saying like, don't settle, you know, and like wait for the perfect man, blah, 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 blah. What I'm I'm saying, be a, be, be realistic. If you're not going to settle, at least not settle until you find somebody who fits the majority of what you need in a person, not want what you need in a person. Because what you need as opposed to what you want is two totally different lives you're going to have to live. I'd rather have a chick that got more what I need than what I want. Because if I got a chick, that's mostly what I what I want. When them knees gonna kick in and she can't give me that, to me, the first thing gonna come in my head, I wasted so much god dog on time. I didn't waste so much emotion. I didn't waste so much in because you gotta think about it, especially people like me that love hard. Man, when we waste time on relationships, man, that stuff hurt. Because we love hard, man. Like we wanna we want the marriage, we want the successful lives together, we want the the good balance, you know, we want the ups and downs, we want do we want the beauty? Like we want the beautiful journey, and the, like we want all of that. So when Bojo come around, and granted, you know it's fifty fifty because I mean you accepted that, but you know just being realistic, when Bojo the clown come around and you sitting there like, dang, I really just wasted six months on your behind. Because some people don't see it until later on down the road. You know you got so caught up in oh yeah this this is it, but then when the real work come in and you got to really be in that relationship and you realize it's like I miss like six red flags chasing all the stuff i wanted rather than what i needed and now you're just sitting there like how do people be trying to leave out of church they put that thing up they just like, you don't mind me because now you got it now you got a dip now you got a dip you know but i got y'all i gotta get off of here i gotta go tend to my dogs then i gotta go to uh bruce hard and train my client 
Um, like I said, tomorrow. I mean, I don't normally come on on Saturdays, but my uh Amber's gonna be out of town, so I'm gonna be doing a lot more music and uh live stream stuff. So I'm definitely coming on at eight fifteen tomorrow morning. And I would, you know, what? I'm gonna see Andre, Andre, if you are and Fantasia, if y'all are in town tomorrow, um, cause I see y'all up in here. I would love for y'all to be on the show tomorrow at eight fifteen in the morning. I would love it because there, Andre and Fantasia is one of my. Before y'all don't know, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna get off. Andre is one of my dear closest friends. Let me tell y'all something. I wouldn't be half the I wouldn't be half the musician I am today if it wasn't for Andre. Andre was the person that took the time to get my hands together in high school for drumming. He got my hands and my music theory together for I didn't I got my music scholarship in college because of Andre. Andre helped me with my timpani pieces. Andre helped me with my melodic pieces. Andre helped me with my percussive pieces. And I I I passed my test like with flying colors. All, and I love you, bro. Like I, I literally remember the days whenever, like, cause my my it's so funny. My grandmother's house is like, let's say we in a cul-de-sac. My grandmother's house, neighbor's house, Andre's house, and I was always by my grandparents. Cause I love my grandparents. I was always by my grandparents' house, and I remember the nights where me and Andre would have talks. We play video games all night. We would work like Andre was the one of the only friends I had that could actually keep up with me physically. So it's like we'd be running miles together, having these talks together. You know, we didn't been through relationships with women together. You know, like really talked about life. Andre is somebody who has been through life and is an amazing, amazing, amazing friend, amazing young woman. I mean, young man. And his young woman, Fantasia, that guy got some wisdom. Now, I'm going to see if they down for it. I can't make no promises, y'all. But um, I know for a fact, if I can get them on here tomorrow and if they're willing to do it, we're going we gonna to have a talk, y'all. We're going to have a nice talk. That's going to be something y'all going to want to tune into. But it's 9.15. I was supposed to get off of here a minute ago. I got to go tend to my dog. So let's end with our, uh, our morning affirmations before I get off. So how this works, follow. I'm seeing a whole bunch of new people up in here. So how this works, whenever we typically end it, um, when we started, you know, we do the phrases and you complete it. But now, at what I say, you guys say on your end, all you guys got to do is just repeat it uh, vocally. So what you're saying vocally goes into the atmosphere and it, and it happens as long as you believe it, right? So let's end it real quick. Uh, I am thankful for today. I receive whatever I had to receive today. I do not accept anything below my pay grade. I'm going to say it again. I do not accept anything below my pay grade. I am valuable. I am precious. I am important. I am strong. I am who I am. I am working on myself. And I will be who I am meant to be. All right. I love y'all. Peace and grease. Uh, I will see y'all tomorrow, hopefully, with Fantasia and Andre. If not, I'll be here by myself. Maybe I might be able to get Dion on because I don't know if Dion could. I don't know how much time he has tomorrow. We do have a lot of stuff to do on the other side of, of all of this. But I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Shout out to everybody. Make sure y'all share. Um, I left the my link in the comment, y'all. I have a, a flash window sale going on right now for like all my detoxes, consultations, all that type of stuff. Y'all, please support my business. Please support my business. I can't ask y'all enough. Thank y'all. Y'all been rocking with me for so long. Even if y'all just want to donate, give me a little something. Love y'all. But peace and chicken grease.